Texas Mass Mundo audience, do we have a spectacular tree in store for you today? In the house is one of the most highly decorated international mathematics Olympians ever, Mr. Diodor von Berg from Serbia, a six-time IMO medalist, four times gold, one of the most decorated international mathematics Olympians ever with some great insight for people who love math and math competitions. Uh, let me take a quick moment and ask that if you enjoy this content that you please hit the subscription button and the notification bell, that you make a comment below, and that you smash that like button. Mr. Theodore Von Berg, one of the most highly decorated IMO contestants ever, right ahead. My name is Samuel Cantu, and this is Texas Math. Mundo. Yes. Texas Mass Mundo audience, are we in store for a spectacular treat today? In the house, we have Theodore Von Berg, a six-time international mathematics Olympian, six-time medalist, four of those times gold, one of the most highly decorated international mathematics Olympians ever. Welcome aboard, Mr. Theodore Von Berg. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so happy you're here. I can't tell you. My audience is going to love the fact you're talking to one of the most highly decorated Olympians ever. Um, so let's start off. I'm going to go deep into your experience, but let's start off by asking, how are you doing? I am fine. Doing a lot of math, but that is to be expected. Oh, really? So, uh, so are you, uh, is that your work or is that a hobby? In what capacity are you doing math? <laughs> Well, math is my work and my hobby and more or less my life. I, I do math like a triple effect. I, uh, I do, I'm still working on my PhD. I also work uh, a small, small portion of the time. I work as a high school teacher. That takes like three hours a week. So it's a small time investment, but that's my official job. I also do math um, as a side job for some... Uh, financial estimates, so some financial math, which is extremely boring, but at least it's lucrative. And I also train students for IMO. So that's, and then uh, besides all that, which is more or less jobs, well, I feel PhD is not much of a job as much as uh, I feel like it's a responsibility. I feel like I am. And then I also like math as a hobby. I do math because I enjoy it, which is more or less IMO math, the competitive math. I would say is my hobby. Wow, wow, wow. And so uh, what area of math are you exploring for your thesis? Uh, the partial differential equations and uh, distribution theory. Oh, wow. 
Is for those who know a uh, little about it, the best way to describe it for high school level, I would say, because it's for them it's difficult to even understand what it is. It would be more or less like differential equations tends to be you have an equation, you have some functions, and you have some derivatives of them, and you're trying to solve them. Distribution theory kind of asks different questions. It's not about much about solving in differential equation, it's more like trying to pose it at all. Is it, is it even defined well? Do we know a solution exists? And stuff like that. It's a bit of a different approach wow. for a different type of things. It's more, more into theory, but it also allows you to approach some uh, equations that you're not even sure they're supposed to exist. It's really weird. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, we'll get deeper into some of this stuff. I want to ask, uh, uh, what do you do when you want to get away from math for, for a while? Well, that is a great question, indeed. Uh, the hobbies that are not math, I enjoy uh, uh, board games. I play them with my friends. I also enjoy computer games. I also play with some other friends. And I have some cats. I don't know if I can call that a hobby, but they certainly help me uh, distract me from math when uh, it gets too much. Yeah, I have three cats. Uh, Luckily, I don't take care of them alone, of course, with my girlfriend. <laughs> Having three cats alone would be a bit weird. <laughs> and what else? I do a lot of sports. That wow. certainly also helps. And that would be more or less everything. All right, all right. Hey, I want to talk about your past. You know, where are you from, <laughs> born and raised, and what is your cultural heritage? Uh, I'm born in Serbia and has also raised. My uh, surname is very non-standard for a Serbian surname, and that's because my father is from Switzerland. I do occasionally visit him. However, I was born and raised in Serbia, so I'm pretty much a Serb, definitely. Uh, I've spent most of my life here. Uh, my education, my university education, I've done in Oxford, oh, wow. the United Kingdom. So I uh, invested four years there. And that's, yeah, that's it, more or less. Okay. So my cultural heritage is therefore mostly Serbian. I do know some of the Swiss culture as well, but that's, other than blood-related, uh, I'm not very culturally related. Okay, okay. So how was your educational experience in Serbia, and when did you realize that you had a talent for mathematics? Well, my... Talent was discovered by my mother when I was about three or four years old. Uh, I was given many things to try. I tried drawing, I tried playing the piano, and I tried math. And when you're three or four years old, like you're not going to try a lot of math, like mostly just adding numbers and subtracting and noticing stuff. And the thing that I displayed most talent for was... Um, math. This was not a choice my mother would have preferred. She was going to respect my abilities either way. Well, she has not. She, had, she knew nothing about math. She's uh, an English professor. She would have preferred if I was talented in languages, but she noticed that I was really good at math. So she hired tutors to help me continue to develop this talent. And very soon, at the age of uh, four, I already was at the level of. Uh, seven, eight-year-olds who start uh, elementary, elementary school. I developed the advantage of three, about three years, of a three years advantage in math development, and all I had to do was maintain that and progress further to be at the top. My first competitive experience was when I was uh, first grade. When I was first grade, I competed for a third grade competition which was a, a small competition that was not, uh, I'm not going to say not official, not, um, not uh, organized by the country. The, um, my first official competition was, it starts from fourth grade. I was second grade and I competed for the fourth. And there was a few of those. Uh, however, they only, there's only those local competitions, uh, the local levels. My first international competition, when things started, became interesting, was when I was fifth grade. Wow. When I was see, when I was fourth grade, I competed for the sixth. So now the, the, the largest level you can reach is the sixth sixth grader. That's uh, fourteen years old. Yeah, fourteen year olds. 
12, 14 year olds, the largest level you can reach is the state level. However, when you reach seventh or eighth grade, uh, there appear international competitions for the junior ones. Now, the junior ones that uh, this region, let's say, likes the most, at least 10 years ago, when this was happening, was the Balkan, Junior Balkan Mathematical Olympiad. And this was my first international uh, competition. When I was uh, fifth grade, I competed for the eighth grade, so that was three, three years in advance. And at this uh, grade, I managed to enter the top six, and since the six of, since six of us went to the Junior Mathematical Olympiad, I went to it, and I won a bronze medal on, the, on my first one. I was like one point away from a uh, silver, I think. Or was it two? Something like that. And I was really sad about it. I was still a kid and I was like crying. Oh, I needed so little for a bronze, but it's for a silver. But I was still happy. It was a success. And the next year I won a gold. As for, uh, but that was next year was when I was sixth grade and I competed for the eighth. The year after that was when things became crazy because, um, uh, the year after that, when I was seventh grade, I decided to compete for the second grade of high school, which well, if, we, if we keep counting from elementary, that would be like the 10th grade. Okay. It depends on the system. Okay. If we consider elementary and the high school together as 12 year education, that would be the, from the seventh to the 10th. I competed for the 10th. And I managed to do quite okay. However, uh, I managed to uh, secure a position on the Serbian Mathematical Olympiad, which is basically a competition for all high schoolers to compete uh, so that the top six would enter the Math Olympiad uh, team. Now, uh, I was competing for the second. I could manage with that. However, when I, enter, when I managed to place myself on a competition for all of high school, there was a massive amount of knowledge, two years worth of knowledge that I would have to develop in a matter of, well, more or less a uh, month or something. Luckily, of course, the, the competition is inspired by IMO, meaning that you don't really need the education for the third, well, some of the third, but the fourth, like derivatives, integrals, and stuff like that that you learn at 12 years, you do not need ever an IMO. Although there are some problems that <laughs> it's useful for. So I did what I could, I did my best, and I actually managed barely to place myself as the sixth wow. in the IMO team. Now, I did place myself in the IMO team, and there was two more months until IMO, and I even managed to progress in those two months even, even more, so that in the team, I think I was third in the team. I, I won a bronze. Wow. So I, I did quite well, even that. It was my first Olympiad, 2007. It was in Vietnam. Were you nervous? Was that nerve-wracking uh, to go there? Yes, it was. It was quite nerve-wracking. It was a, I, I was I was like a small kid, and I went to uh, Vietnam, which is, well, it's a um, it's a very different place. It's very far away. And, uh, I, it's, I, it's like a jungle base. No, it's it's like a literal jungle. It's uh, uh, it's very humid. There's plants everywhere. Like it's it's like a city in a jungle. It was in Hanoi, capital. It was crazy. My mother went with me because she was afraid for my safety if, I, if she sent me alone. So she went there. That was the only time she went with me. Next year, I'll, I, will, of course, went alone. That I was alone. But as a 14-year-old, <laughs> it was a bit too much for me. But uh, even though I, I, I was like 14 uh, and small kid, I was there. Although I was taller than most people there. <laughs> Still, it was funny. Yes, it was. It was an interesting experience. It was all in all, it was fun. What drew you to mathematics? Was it the competition? Was it the beauty of the mathematics? What I enjoyed you? math. I, I, I didn't fear competition that much. Uh, of course, some moments can be nerve-wracking, but I enjoyed competitions, but I also prefer, I enjoyed math in general. I just... Uh, and yes, the competitive math also... Um, it's 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 enjoyable. I, I it was uh, it's like a puzzle, and I like solving puzzles. So uh, every problem is like a puzzle that I wanted to, and that I felt anger and frustration until I solve it. So I just had to solve it, and yes, solve them I did. So your mother was a very powerful figure and helpful figure. Were there any other people that helped you along the way? Uh, anybody you want to do a shout out well, to? 
she did because she had not she really had a little to do with math so she she herself could really not train me on anything all the, the most core things she did was just notice my talent and then help me develop it mostly by hiring other people to help me develop it because obviously I, I wasn't going to school I mean I, I did go to school I mean I, I school I would go to school but it's not like the math I was I learned in school would be any helpful at all because I already knew everything <laughs> while going to school. And I also didn't want to skip grades because that would mean I would have to learn all of the other subjects in advance. And I would also go with people who are much older than me, which the children who are much older than me, which for other reasons would be not optimal. So I would more or less learn math in advance. Now, of course, there are many other, there are other tutors that work with me who helped me a lot to develop as a mathematician. Probably the most notable one I would uh, I could call on would be Vladimir Yankovic. He worked a lot with me for uh, about four or five years during my development for IMO. So, yes, that that's more or less it. Okay, uh, tell me about your experience at the Olympiads. What are your most memorable moments during the Olympiads? Memorable moments. Well, Vietnam was definitely a very very interesting place. I was never before in a place like that. I, I was in some exotic places, but nothing like that. That was a new experience for me. Uh, after that, there was uh, uh, an, an interesting Olympiad was in Kazakhstan. They actually placed us, they, we were placed in uh, Astana, the capital, which is a ghost city, more or less. It's a city that was uh, built, I, I artificially built. And it, it was an extremely weird experience. It's like in the middle of the day. You're in a city that is fully built, but like, and you're on a highway, like a, a boulevard. It's like a four, six lanes, and you see one car passing every 15 minutes. It's, it's a weird experience. <laughs> uh, the other ones were quite uh, normal. I, uh, the other IMOs I participated in was in uh, Germany, quite a normal IMO. And it was a really nice IMO, just a normal experience, a pleasant normal experience. Amsterdam, Argentina, and Spain. Wow. I think I got that. That's of six. Did I, did I mention six? I think I mentioned six. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, uh, were you able to uh, network with fellow Olympians? Were you close to your teammates? Uh, yes. Well, the the teammates. The thing. The thing is that in Serbia, most of uh, the students usually come from the same high school. And the reason for that is because this high school uh, attracts, a, like, from the six people that go to IMO, usually about four, up to six, usually, but usually at least four are from the same high school. And it's the one that I teach currently, yeah, so it's not like a random, I, I teach in the, the, the best high school. The, uh, and uh, the reason for this... high school? I, well, I, yes, I went to that high school and I teach in it now. The mathematical high school in Belgrade. Oh. So um, the reason for this is basically that the best kids more or less enter the high school, and yes, the best kids also exit the high school. And uh, the thing about it is, it's a good school, and there's a lot of talented teachers, and it uh, helps uh, students develop. Not it's also a useful thing that we're not too stressed out about other subjects, usually. And it's a, it's a high school that is it's not just focused on math. It also focuses on physics, uh, programming, and generally the natural sciences. It puts a priority on those. Okay, wow, wow. Uh, so how does one become an IMO, uh, uh, good enough to be an IMO? What was your study regimen like? Well, the thing, the most simplistic way to put it, but a quite effective way, I guess, is you need talent and you need work. And uh, the way I would like, I, I would compare these two, the way I would, I would describe them as factors is like uh, multiplicative factors, meaning that uh, work without talent is a, is a zero and uh, talent without work is also a zero. You need a substantial amount of talent and a substantial amount of work, and both need to be invested heavily so that multiplied, you have you achieve the desired effect. Like a less talented person is going to have to work significantly harder 
to achieve the same result, but, and also talent can be developed through time. Uh, t- talent is, it's several things. It, it could be interpreted as intelligence, but intelligence can also be particular, uh, leading towards particular types of problems. Some people are intelligent for math, but some, uh, have some people have intelligence that is better used in uh, elsewhere. So it's not gen- as general, maybe. But what would be the most important thing? Oh, uh, so like I said, talent and work. And of course, it's important to have good people, good mathematicians to work with. This is, I had good mentors to work with. And uh, the fourth important thing probably would be a competitive environment, meaning that you are, you have students around you of your age that you possibly go to high school with or that you at least interact with on a regular basis who are as capable as you or well comparably capable to you so that uh, you have something to strive for so that you have somebody to compete with uh, competitive environments can motivate a student to work significantly harder so uh, these are like the four main conditions so let's see uh, talent is simply something, unfortunately, that is mostly you're born with. I could say you're mostly de- born and developed in the early years of life. Let's say two, three, four, maybe up to six year of life, you, you develop your talent. Uh, hard work. Well, obviously, you have work ethics. You need to have you, you need to have a character that um, disposition to be willing to work a lot, which. Most students are not, of course, and I can respect that. Is it a lot of that. isolation? I did what? Is it a lot of isolation? Are you often by yourself studying? Not, no, not really. Uh, during my math education during high school and elementary school, I usually would study on average maybe three or four hours per day, which honestly, it's not a lot. I had a lot of extra time to do whatever I wanted. However, it is consistently three up to four hours a day, so it does take some time. But it's not like uh, it's so much time that you have nothing, no time for anything else. I I do. I had enough during that time. I I did sports my whole life. Most of my life, I did uh, martial arts. Wow. I do enjoy violence. It's very fun. Uh, Against people who are as strong as me or stronger. It's not 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 much fun if they're weaker, but um, yes, I, I, the, it's you don't have to abandon everything to be good at math. Okay. The, as for the other two factors, you need to have good mentors. This does depend on on location. So since I was born and raised and lived in the capital, uh, which is well, there's a lot of people, and as, as such, I had access to good mathematicians. I managed to find good mentors. I worked with them, and that definitely helped me a lot. It would not be as easy. It would be very difficult without them to achieve what I've achieved. And as for the competitive environment, this is very important. However, this can be simulated uh, nowadays using internet, I guess, since since uh, in case you cannot find uh, people who also compete and who are, who are competitive in your vicinity you can always uh, find internet environments where people discuss problems and try to solve them as fast as possible and stuff like that and so I guess that's the most important things I got I think I could say great insight great insight hey, where do you keep your medals my medals are let me check <laughs> I moved them close by. Here they are. Let me see. We have one. Is this? Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm going to just yeah. move around here. These here are all of the international medals. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. Except this, one. this one doesn't count. That's the condor or something. Uh, these are the meth. Actually, no, sorry. There is there is a, an imposter here. Oh. An imposter, and I'm going to locate him very soon. 
I did participate in a science Olympiad. And that was, yeah, I found it. Gotcha. This is a very suspicious, well, maybe this side, mm -hmm. a very suspicious name, IGSO, Junior Science Olympiad. Oh. Yes, well, it was weird. It's like physics, biology, and chemistry. I, 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 I was good at physics. Uh, chemistry, biology, not that much, although I did study a bit hard, and uh, I managed to win a silver. And so, yeah, that was some fun memories from Korea. That was in Korea. The, the South Korea, of course, not North Korea. That would be interesting. And, um, yes, we, uh, we butchered an octopus. No, not, it was a squid, yes. A squid that had transparent blood and we would disassemble it and put the, its organs on a paper. Yeah, that was some traumatic stuff. <laughs> I yeah. Yes, that was the biology part. <laughs> Ah, uh, I remember. We made our teammate a girl do it. Mm -hmm. She screamed all the way while doing it. Fun times. That's funny. That's funny. Is there a medal yes. that you value above all others? Oh, oh yeah. I suppose I could show all the golds from the IMOs. Because I guess those are the four important ones. Here's two. Let's count to four. Oh, this one is a thick and gold. Is it... Shit, no, that's Falcon Mathematical Olympiad, not that one. Another one. What is this? Oh, that's the Hanoi. Oh, here you are. There you are. This is also one. And the last one. Where are you? Come out, come out, wherever you are. Are you here? No? Right here? Right here? God damn it, where are you? I know you're here somewhere. Yeah, anyways, uh, here's the Netherlands. Wow. Amsterdam. Gold medal. Quite nice. Very nice. We have the Kazakhstan gold medal. Wow. And we have the German gold medal. The German one was the first one. I think. Wait, was it? Yeah, I suppose the mo the one that I'm proud of the most is the German one. See, in Germany, I was actually... Was it in Germany? I think it was. Yeah, I think it was in Germany. I was the third in the world, actually. Wow. Uh, I did solve all six problems. Now, I did lose a few points on, on some small details, but I did solve all six problems on that IMO. So that was uh, quite the achievement. I was happy. Oh, wait, there's second level of medals. God damn it. Now I know where that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some extra medals. All right. Extra medals below. I'm guessing that uh, I'm going to find the gold here. Wow. Where is it? Where is it? Is, oh, this is a silver. Yeah, Madrid. Right, right. Where are you? Is it this? Is it? No. No, it's not. I am... This does not belong here. Okay. Well, I apparently... No, I'm not missing it. Where is this? Oh, it's Romania. Oh, well, definitely supposed to be here. Yeah, but yes, we have a bunch of medals there. Beautiful. Oh, it's a beautiful. Argentina is missing. Yes, yes, yes. Argent oh, oh, of course, here it is. That's the last one. There they go. Argentina. The gold in Argentina, and that was the last one. Wow. Wow. Great yeah, stuff. here we are. Great. Yep, there is a lot of medal here. A lot of medal. So where did you go to college? Uh, and uh, did you, your Olympiad experience help you with that journey? Yes, I went to Oxford University, uh, a college. They, they have a, when you say college, you probably meant university, but as a particular college, it was Exeter, Exeter College in Oxford. Uh, well, certainly the experience from IMOs, the education I received in advance, certainly helped me make the studies easier. I, uh, I finished studies. Uh, with ease, and con I returned to Serbia to continue my stud further studies here. Wow. I'm doing my PhD here because uh, uh, let's say it's most suitable. I guess I could say that COVID had something to do with it, but I, it kind of does work out here because the field I am interested in happen happens to have one of the most capable mathematicians in Serbia, a Serb. So I 
I'm gen I'm anyway happy to work with him, so I don't really have to go to uh, go to study abroad for my PhD since I have uh, already one of the best mathematicians for that here, Ilipovic. So you had a lot of individual success. How did the Serbian teams do? The Serbian team, uh, it happens that right about the moment when I started competing from Vietnam, from when I was seventh, like uh, Serbia had a dry spell. We had like, um, we did win some golds occasionally, but we had like a 10, 15 year old, 10, 15 year interval without a gold medal. And then the year that I competed in, we won a gold medal. Not me, of course. Like I said, in Vietnam, I won a bronze. And then the next year, we won a gold medal again. That's when I won a silver, quite close to gold. And after that, the next four years, I kept winning gold. But after, after I finished, Serbia continued regular. I'm not sure if we won. It's not like I checked. But the thing is that uh, like, compared to the interval, when we had no golds at all, after that, after after I competed, we started regularly winning golds, like almost almost every year. I don't think we ever managed to win two golds in the same year. I don't think so. I, I haven't checked, but I think I would have known. I think I think we haven't done that yet. But we certainly have progressed a lot. I think in teams of placement, we regularly are placed at like twentieth, thirtieth place. I think once when I was in the team, we managed to place uh, 15 for something, something or 14, something really, really good. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we were uh, really good. And that's how Serbia is quite, to co compared to our size, which is like 7 million people, we are quite a competitive country for math. Awesome, awesome. What do you, uh, what do you value the most about your uh, Olympiad experience? What do I value the most? Well, I had a great education, had a lot of fun. I, I was um, sort of a mini superstar, thanks to my medals. So I also value the attention. I'm not going to claim, I'm not going to pretend that I don't enjoy it. I enjoy it. It's nice. And yeah, I mean, in general, all, all in all, it was a great experience. Uh, and like a lot of people consider that in order to achieve that, I had to miss out a lot, but it's not really true because I, I, it was, like I said, I didn't need to invest all that much time to achieve this. I just needed to invest consistently and to keep to keep it, keep in mind, I'm, it's, it's not, how do you call it? I'm not a nerd and I didn't study regularly all on time for every school. Like I had bad grades in school. I, I, I had I, I, at the end I would also I would always fix the grades. Uh, I would make sure that the average was good enough to get the top grade. But I had C's in high school. I had I had D's sometimes. I don't think I ever got an F. Oh, maybe I did get an F. Yeah, like returning from a competition, I had I studied nothing for biology and uh, BAME test oh. F. Yeah, like it happens. But the point is, I never really bothered. I didn't invest so much time because math was my priority. I studied math the most, and as for the rest, I invested just enough time to have uh, sufficient results, to have uh, satisfying results. Mm -hmm. So it's like a organization of time and priorities. It's not going to be perfect, but you, you do what, what you can. So what does the future have in store for you? Well, the future, that's a great question. Uh, I am hopefully going to get married soon. So I'm going to have some kids. So that's a nice future to look for. As for math future, I'm going to finish my PhD. I'm already working on some open problems from that field, which hope are, are, may or may not be part of my PhD. We'll see about that. So yeah, there's uh, as for the that math aspect, I, I, guess, I guess I separate math into two different fields. I, I, I call them competitive math or like fun math. And the boring, serious university or later level math. The, I've described what I do for the later level math, finishing up PhD and uh, working on some open problems. As for the fun, competitive math, I tutor students and help them uh, try to achieve, well, their full potential on IMO. Now, do you tutor worldwide or just in Serbia? 
IQ tour both in Serbia and worldwide. I guess I also uh, thought that was like more of a recent hobby that I've done for a, uh, it's become sort of a meme in my high school. Um, I, I uh, it was a hobby um, that I started developing from last year. I, uh, at some point I did, I was done doing some problems. Like I, I'm capable of doing more or less any problems from the IMO problems or IMO shortlist, but I particularly tried solving geometry problems with complex numbers. I did a few, it went well, but then I kept doing it. And then I kept doing it some more. And at some point it became from the question of which problems can be solved, it became a question of which problems cannot be solved with complex numbers, because I sort of killed them all. I, I, I murdered them all. Uh, every single problem I found, it was, uh, it was funny. It became funny at some point. But then, um, it's not like it's, 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 and I'm not, it's not like massive, massive, huge, disgusting equation. No, like elegant, short, elegant, two, three pages, stop. Like, Last year, I I am all free. I I I have I sold it in two two and a half pages with into complex numbers. Like I, it became a meme because I'm I'm teaching of course to my students that, and it's become a meme in the high school as well because uh, I often do it like that. But uh, yeah, that there's that as well. I, I could call it a hobby, but it's oh. not really. Mr. Theodore von Berg, your accomplishments are legendary. You know. Four gold medals, six medals total, uh, one of the most accomplished international mathematics Olympians ever. Uh, do you have any parting words or final thoughts as we conclude this interview? I uh, hope that everybody uh, realized their full potential, whether it's for math or not. Just do your best and have fun. And it's important to do what you like because that's the key to having fun while working. Absolutely. Have fun, man. Enjoy life, embrace life. Absolutely. I, I want to thank you so very much for your time, for, for, for coming on my show. I can't uh, t thank you enough. I'm in Houston, Texas. If you're ever in this part of the world, you have a friend here. You have a friend here. I'm glad to hear that. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, best of luck to you and uh, farewell. Thank you. Good luck as well. Wow, what a fascinating insight from one of the best ever. One of the most highly decorated IMO contestants ever, Mr. Theodore Von Berg from Serbia. Thank you very much for that wonderful insight. Let me take a quick moment and ask that if you enjoy this content, that you please hit the subscription button and the notification bell, that you leave a comment below, and that you smash that like button. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm, and let's spread this joy, let's spread this beauty to as many people as possible. I have many wonderful things in store for this channel, and I truly appreciate your support. My name is Salvo Cantu, and this is Texas Mad Mundo. Farewell.